What is up, YouTube? East King 818 here. I am playing Call of Duty Black Ops 1. Uh, zombies. I'm doing Kino de Toten. Uh, it's the very first Black Ops map that there is. It's honestly probably one of my favorites of all time. Uh, so I'm just going to give my strategy for how I survived the longest. So basically, the first thing I do, as you saw, was... Uh, Alright, and uh, the other reason I'm actually, so before I actually get into the main part of this commentary, the only reason I'm uh, picking this game and this map is because, well, Black Ops 3 Zombies maps are kind of stale. Uh, I've played through most of them quite a bit. Uh, the only one I didn't play was Zitsubu no Shima, uh, like the third map. And the only reason I didn't play that much is because I didn't want to waste the money to buy the gate or the DLC. It wasn't a DLC that held a lot of interest uh, for me. Like, Der Eisendrach, uh, that held a lot of interest. I, I saw, like, part of the map once, and it was just, like, it was incredible. I wanted to see more of it, and I wanted to play more, so I went out and bought the... Well, I wanted to play it, I meant, and, like, because I saw it, it looked cool. So, yeah, anyway, I wanted to play it. It looked awesome. I wanted to see more. So, you know, I uh, went out and bought it. I had a good time on it, you know? It was a, uh, it was a solid map. So yeah, this is my survival. So I picked Black Ops 1 just because, like, these maps weren't about the Easter Egg, or at least they didn't start off about the Easter Egg. Uh, like, you know, it was just survival. I know there was an Easter Egg, I believe. I don't actually know it. Uh, so now I won't be doing it. Dear me, this seems like a rather deadly tool. Uh, just this one. Oh, this might be a bad idea. So yeah, my uh, my strategy starts off uh, shoot them four times in the first round and then knife them, and then the second round is uh, with however many bullets you have left, eight shots and then knife them, and just hold out in this fir uh, this first room here for like the first round or two, and then uh, by the top door up there grab this gun and then you can easily hold out for another round or two uh this is kind of cool this was uh this was an easter egg in its own when rick Toffin stops running his fucking mouth oh look it's me but not quite as magnificent i always thought that was kind of cool you get them to talk about their uh pictures this one didn't photograph so bad I don't actually know anything about that blank painting. Uh, a lot of people, like, I know there was theories behind that, and, like, there was all th kinds of things in the lore. I never actually read up on it, so I can't say I know shit about it, and I won't pretend that I do. There was actually a lot about zombies I never knew or never understood, and, like, I, I still have missed a lot. I, I never actually bought any of the DLC maps for uh, Black Ops 1. I never bought... Uh, I bought Mob of the Dead for number 2, and... I can probably use that. <sighs> the Die Rise. I bought Die Rise and... Uh, the other one I mentioned, which I now can't remember. No, die! Mob of the Dead. Right, so those are the only two maps I had on there. And then... Uh, Let's see, on 360, or no, sorry, on Black Ops 3, rather. Um, so on Black Ops 3, I bought... I bought the Giant, I bought Der Eisendrach, and I bought Revelations. So I missed Zitsubo no Shima, and that was it. Um, which, my friend had it, and he let me play it, and uh, I didn't really care for it. It wasn't... There was probably a lot more to the map I didn't see. But I got kind of bored after surviving 10 rounds in that first area. And I was just kind of like, yeah, this isn't for me. Uh, Der Eisendrach I love. Uh, Revelations is actually pretty good. I've enjoyed what I've played of it. Uh, I still haven't figured it out fully, and I refuse to watch any videos on any map I'm trying to figure out. So, like, that one is just no... I'm not help getting help with that, so it's, it's... I'm struggling a little. It's a big map. It's kind of difficult. So this is my strategy after that, uh, basically, by that door, come down here and get the shotgun. And you'll see why the shotgun is important in a few minutes. Uh, basically, when the dogs come, it's good to have it, because then you can just camp a corner and uh, 
they won't be able to touch you usually. And then sooner or later, I would recommend upgrading to the MP40. Uh, it's a very, very good gun, and uh, it doesn't... It'll last for quite a while before you need something else. So, absolutely buy the MP40. I did not mean to throw that grenade, I just accidentally bumped the button on my controller. When I play Call of Duty, like, most of my time is spent in zombies, like, uh... The only one I can say that I actually spend more time in multiplayer than zombies was Advanced Warfare, and that's because I refused to buy any DLC for that game. I had it on 3... No, I had it on PS3. I had it on PS3, I prestiged once, and I was like, you know, I'm done with this game. I enjoyed it, played it for a while, then I realized prestiging is fucking stupid, and I never played it again. I prestiged in Black Ops 3 on the PS3 once, and also, and I was just like, nah, now I'm done. Keep my patience with me. I'm not a high enough level. Like, I haven't hit 55 yet on any other system. Like, I have it on PS4 and Xbox One. I haven't even hit a high enough level to prestige yet. Just to give you an idea of how much I actually play multiplayer anymore. Like, it's... It's kind of gotten bullshit. My connection doesn't really allow for it. So I don't do it. I just play zombies. I can do zombies pretty well. I'm... I enjoy it. It's fun wave defense. And, uh, you know, for a little while, it doesn't get boring. It's kind of cool to come back and play Black Ops 1 Zombies, because I haven't done this in forever. Uh, I just recently rebought this, uh, because it got backwards compatibility, so I was like, cool, why not buy it and play it, and it's been a lot of fun. I've been enjoying it, it's good times. That's so humorous! <laughs> So I'm not going to open that door yet. Usually I would, but I'm going to wait and see if this is a dog round. And if it is, then I'm going to wait here. Alright, so it's going to be wave 7 for the dog round. So I'm just going to run through here. Usually I would also recommend waiting to turn on the power until after the dogs. But this is a good room to get screwed in. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and turn that right on. Theater, so it's out in the alley. Oh boy. So here's a really good theory of what you can do in theory. This is a good strategy you can do here. You can train them around this section right here very easily. And for those of you who don't know what training them is, it's like kiting them, or if you don't use that term either. Basically, just get a big old fucking mob of them and run them in a circle. Um, which is probably the most effective way to stay alive. This is what I'll do up until wave 40. Uh... Or until I get screwed over like that because I hesitated. Don't ever hesitate when you're going to run through. Uh, that's another thing with this, uh, my strategy that works. Don't hesitate. I just hesitated there and it resulted in me going down. Um, don't be stupid about where you're running. I was very stupid about that. Um, I tried to kill off as few as possible until I know I have a solid train behind me. Uh, which I don't have. <laughs> Here. Also, be very aware of your back when you're doing this, because like, some will just randomly despawn and then spawn behind you, and battles kill you over too. I'm trying to kill off enough to get to the. Got it. All right. Next part of my strategy is also pretty important to do. Uh, and it should be kind of self-explanatory, really. Not self-explanatory, it should be just kind of a given one. After you've done all this, link the teleporter pads. It's, you know, there's no points involved to link them, uh, so just run and link those pads as quick as you can. And then go back and buy Juggernaut if you've saved up enough. Juggernaut can and will save your life many times. It would have... Well, nah, it probably wouldn't have saved me from going down back there, but it would have given me a chance to get out of it alive, yes. I guess. She sounds like a sweet little so, I already did script the thing by not training like I wanted to here. Um, wow, that took me a lot longer than I thought it would to kill him. This will be a dog round. I'm quite sure of it. Alright, so I'm ready. Yeah, dog round. Alright. 
I thought it was usually like wave five. It's weird that it's wave seven. Uh, my poor little that's all right. We'll get used. I'll, uh, I'll stay alive. So I'm gonna actually camp this corner for the dog round. Uh, if I had been back in that other room, I would have camped a different room. I took my hand off my controller for a second there, and it almost killed me. Um, the other thing is, when you hear multiple things of electricity like that, like you gotta be quick to come back from that because there'll be multiple dogs coming at you, and it's. It can get bad, so reload when you have a chance with this shotgun. It takes a second, and it can kill you if you're not careful. Uh, that was the last one. That's weird. It's usually longer. So, that's a couple things with dog rounds that makes them pretty easy. Is just camp a corner, reload as fast and as often as you can. Uh, if you hear multiple things of electricity, be ready to move quick. And ultimately, just don't panic. I mean, dogs can be a little bit of a problem at first, but I mean, once you get used to it, I remember back when I was younger and this game came out, my brother got it and I thought it was the coolest thing. And uh, my brother's younger than me too. Keep that in mind. I didn't actually know him until I was uh, probably fifth or fourth or fifth grade. Um, that's when we met. So yeah, and we are biological siblings. We actually did meet till we were four or five or fourth or fifth grade each. Uh, I was probably in fifth. He was probably in fourth. So. Anyway, not part of the story. I remember he got this, and I went over to his house for, like, the first or second time, and, like, he was like, hey, you play this? And I was like, nah, I've never played before. And, uh, we just, like, started playing, and we stayed up all night playing it, and when we would get to dog rounds, like, we'd freak the hell out, because it was, like, it was kind of frightening to us, and, like, we never kited like this when we played, so we got kind of boned a couple times. We didn't realize that kiting was so important, we just ran around like chickens with our heads cut off and just tried to survive that way, which is not a smart way to go about this at all. I still think kiting is the best way you're going to survive for long periods of time here. Uh, I don't ever pick up nukes. Uh, a lot of people will be like, pick them up, pick them up, it's a good idea, it gets rid of the zombies, but it actually screws you out of a lot of points. A nuke will roughly give you 400 points, I believe. So, I never pick them up just because if I can wait till the end of the round after I've killed them all, it's just a free 400 points. It's still there, I'll pick it up. Now it's gone, alright. I actually didn't mean to kill them all off that round either. I wanted to wait and save one. So, I'm gonna go against my strategy here for a second, which is... I mean, it'll work. It's totally fine to do. Uh, just... You know, be wary. I'm just going right to this. I knew it was here. Alright, this is a good gun, but it's kind of slow to reload, so I gotta be careful. So I'm gonna try to run back there just so I can go retrain. And like I said, this is just what I do. Uh, do whatever you please for your strategies. Uh, this is kind of an older map, so this map's like going to play Black Ops 3 versus this. This map is a piece of cake. Um, I don't struggle with it whatsoever anymore. I used to struggle a little bit with it, but it's kind of like now, it's just kind of like, eh, whatever. I, I'm still, I'm a little bit stupid about the way I play this map because I've been playing so much Black Ops 3 zombies and like Black Ops 3 is just so much more difficult than these old maps. Not to say Black Ops 3 zombies is difficult, after you get used to it it's pretty pretty simple and pretty repetitive. Just Black Ops 3 is actually where I got good at training zombies like this, because uh, in Shadows of Evil, even if you don't realize it, you've got to do it a lot to survive in those maps. And I think I just totally boned myself. Nope. But yeah, Black Ops 3, like, even if you don't think about it, like, you've got to get good at kiting really quickly. Um, like, Shadows of Evil requires the most kiting I think I've ever seen in a map to get anywhere. Uh, and maybe I'll do, like, a strategy video for that for me, too. I can usually do all the rituals and get the sword by wave 10. I, uh, I've tried to get the sword. I, I do struggle getting it just because, like, I'll get really cocky and ahead of myself and just be like, I'm not gonna die doing this stupid-ass move that I know I shouldn't do, and then I do it, and I think back to myself, and I'm like, wow, that could have gone so many other ways for me. So, uh, don't get cocky, in Black Ops 3 especially. In between rounds, man, these are boring as hell. Um... No wounds, no wounds! 
Oh yeah, so one part of the Easter egg that I do remember, now that I think about it, like, before Easter eggs, like, were the main objective, back when they were just cool little things you could do, you could find tape reels. Uh, when you go through the teleporter, sometimes you'll end up in these, uh, secret rooms. Not secret rooms, but you'll end up in these rooms that aren't in the main map. And then, uh, there'll be, there'll be, like, uh, tapes, like, those reels in there. And you grab those reels and bring them back to the room you teleport into. Like, the main teleporter room, and you play them. Ah, oh, fuck. So you play them, and then... Yeah, like I said, don't hesitate, guys. Let's, uh, does this to you. And I, I don't think I'm gonna survive this one. Yeah, this is gonna... Ooh. This is gonna end rough for me. Yeah, this is gonna end rough. This is gonna end really rough. I'm talking shit about don't get it cocky, and then I'm getting cocky again. I'm about to die. Two hits and I'm down, right? I don't have Jug. I don't want insta kill. I want the points. Alright, I'm okay. Oh no. Alright, I'm okay. So, the reason I was saying I'm okay, I was saving up to go back and get a jug and then go pack a punch. So I pack a punch at the end of a round like this, so this way it's like one of these uh, monkey things. I don't know what the correct term for them is. Uh, leave one alive, teleport out, come in here, pack a punch. So this is where pack a punch is, you go through the teleporter. This is the room I was talking about also when you get the uh, rails through. You uh, put the reels in here and it'll project out there and you can watch them. Which is always pretty cool. You can see the one guy left alive down there. I shouldn't have killed him. Um, so now the teleporter is actually going to have a cooldown on it. Uh, I think it's like... 30 seconds or like 60 seconds or something like that. Uh, this will eventually teleport me out. Here we go. Uh, and it should teleport me into a different room. Oh, it didn't. All right. Uh, usually, sometimes it'll teleport you into a different room that's not in the main map like this. And that's where you'll go to uh, find those reels. I think the highest survived to zombie map on this is like 102. And the guy used mods the entire time because like it's not actually possible with the amount of zombies and uh, how much damage they'll take to kill. It's not actually possible to survive that round. Like, when the Thunder Gun's not killing them in seven shots, so you know there's a problem. <laughs> That's why it's, like, impossible to survive that long these days. Like, I know it's probably possible to do, but it's, like, so much more difficult than it used to be to survive long times. Like, it's... I struggled to get past Wave 10 on Black Ops 3, and that's... That's pretty shitty, when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. Like, you know, I'm struggling to get past Wave 10, and here I am trying to give a strategy on Black Ops 1. Um... Black Ops 3 is kind of a more difficult game, though. Uh... For its own reasons. Like, it really is. Uh... There's just a lot more to watch out for in Black Ops 3 than you realize at first, and it just, it catches up to you. These monkeys, they, uh, they get to me. I don't know what their correct term is. I just call them monkeys. Uh, it's always worked. It's what we've always called them. I'm gonna leave one of them alive. So when the green light's back on up there, it's right there. When the green light's back on, you know you can uh, relink it back to the uh, main little pad over here. So once it's green, just go ahead and link it back. Uh, if you have 5,000, absolutely go back through and repack. If you don't, uh, don't. I'm not actually going to not go grab quick revive. If I go down, I go down and that's it. Um, just because this video is getting a little lengthy. So yeah, that's basically just my entire survival guide. Never open this fucking door. If you plan to survive at all and be able to successfully train them, don't open that door. It's just such a bad idea. And it's also really useful to have a shotgun through dog rounds. Uh, because you know, the shotgun is just a much quicker kill on them. And it's less likely to screw you if you're in a corner like that. I didn't want to switch my pack gun. I really didn't. 
I just wasn't sure I'd survive any other way. So like I said, you gotta be ready to move quickly when uh, dog grounds come about. Just reload all my guns. And usually I would say wait till the end of a round to go through here. But I'm just gonna go through now. Pack a punch it now and uh, throw... Oh, I got hit with the... Uh... Sometimes when you go through, you'll get hit and you'll be really slow for a while. So... Alright, so you'll see like zombies are starting to come down on the right there. Uh, zombies will just start to like randomly come down and stand in there. So what I like to do is just take my grenades and throw them all down into the center. And then come over here. Alas, buy some more grenades. They're starting to pile up again, so throw some more grenades. Oh, and then teleport out. This is one of the rooms. Uh, sometimes in here there'll be little reels. You just hold X on them and you pick them up. You'll see an icon down for it. Or for it down on the bottom. And spawn right in the center of a few zombies. Oh, of course. They're spawning behind me now. This is, uh... Because I'm not where I like to be, I'm not exactly prepared for this. So I'm just trying to keep my front cleared and my back as well. So as I said, I didn't know Mule Quick was here. That's cool. Uh, so like I said, don't panic when you get like that. Just uh, don't hesitate. Just run. Uh... And I'm right back where I want to be. I might actually try to keep one alive and relink it, and then uh, go from there. Uh, I think they're gonna respawn elsewhere. They're training. All right. Seems all good. Seems all good. All right. Just gonna open fire. That's all of them. Now nah, I see one. What's up? Bye. Alright. How oh, long wait is going to be on this thing? Well, let's just wait and relink it. This is another thing you can do. Is just One of them is pretty easy to train around here just because like he won't ever catch you. Uh, if you're smart about your movements, like I just like to do this with them. Oh, shit, there's two. Um, no, three. Whoa. Now we're getting crazy. <laughs> uh, you can easily jump them just like that, too. Something else that's really useful to have while I'm thinking about it. The Bowie knife is really good. Uh, the Bowie knife is good if you have those things, because if you notice when you shoot them, they explode. And I've been careful not to walk into that uh, gas. But when you do, it basically stuns you and uh, makes you slow. Stabbing them with a knife will make them not explode. So the Bowie knife will kill them much faster and make them not explode so you don't, you know get totally boned over. Um, just time left. Alright, it's actually ready to go. I, f I forgot I linked it. <laughs> so... So hang on, wait. I do want to get this guy out of here. I have horrible accuracy. Um... I really do. That's kind of why I struggle playing multiplayer also, is because like, I can't hit like a dead target. So I don't do multiplayer for that reason. Uh, you kind of have to be accurate to kill your opponent faster than he can kill you. Luckily with these guys, it's just a matter of moving faster than them. And I can do that for the most part and outmaneuver these guys. I fucking totally cornered myself. So yeah, that was my strategy basically. Usually you'll survive much longer than 14, but I kind of gave up more or less towards the end of that. That's why I didn't buy Revive. Uh, I wanted to end this video because it's getting to be about 25 minutes long. So, thank you for watching this video. That's my strategy to survive. You can usually survive a lot longer if you use it better than I did. And uh, stay tuned for more videos. I'm going to do some in Black Ops 3. I'm, I might do one for five. I haven't really played a lot of five, so maybe we'll develop a strategy right here on the channel. Um... Or maybe not. Who knows? Um, I'll record other videos in the future, too. I'm going to move to the PS4 to record some things eventually. Uh, probably not right away. I'm probably going to stick on the Xbox for a bit. I've got some games to record. Uh, I won't give too many spoilers, just in case I end up not doing those series that I want to do. Um, 
Halo 2 is going to be running series. I recorded that video before I recorded this. It's now 12.30 at night. Um, so yeah. I'll be doing those videos eventually, hopefully. And that's about it. I'll do this. So yeah, I'm going to do through Halo 2 and Halo 3 for sure. I might do through Halo 5 and maybe through 4. Um, just trying to plan out my schedule. Probably shouldn't do that while I'm recording. I should probably write that all down and figure that out on my own. Anyway, this has been great. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video um, to later today because it's technically the next day. It's 10.15 as of now, and I started recording on 10.14, so I've been recording for enough time um the next video i upload and record will probably be with pika crafts tomorrow i might record one by myself before he gets here so i'll do two a day every day for the weekends and then that'll be about six videos a week and then uh if i can record a couple throughout the week i'll try but otherwise probably not um either way uh thank you for watching stay tuned for more I promise I'm going to try to keep a better schedule. I did disappear for three months, uh, like I said in the last video, which would have been Halo, which doesn't come out yet uh, by this video. Or no, it would have come out by this. That came out. That'll come out before this. Um, or at least that's the main goal. I, I had some stuff come up. I've been working a lot in you know, school. <clears throat> so I haven't exactly had the time to record a whole lot, which just sucks because I want to. I also didn't have the proper equipment to do it with. My PC is not good for recording on, and recording through the Elgato by itself is kind of sketchy for me. I'm not ever sure if it's just falling behind or if it's just the way the Elgato works. And I can't record at 1080p like I want to. I have to record at 720, which is still fine. It's better than what I've ever recorded in the past, but it's it's weird. I've also never had a proper mic. The mic I had before was a $20 cheap piece of shit that wasn't very good and it picked up everything in the house so i went out bought an extension arm got my blue snowball which is fucking fantastic bought an elgato i have an xbox and a ps4 so i'm gonna start recording my pc hopefully is good enough just to do this stuff tv is good enough for it it's a little dinky thing but it's perfect for recording uh anyway i'll see you guys in the next video and i hope you enjoyed this so stay tuned for more